Hey guys, it's Dan here and this is Sully and she's helping me with the podcast episode today. She's actually snuck upstairs here into the office. Uh, today's episode is the second part of an interview I did with Josh Langmaid who runs MediaCore in a small town in the Midwest of America called Rochester. It's a town of about 100,000 people and Josh runs one of the biggest uh, video production companies in the town and in this second part of the interview with him we're going to talk about some of the challenges you have as an entrepreneur running a business and also learning about his process and how he is sort of trying to kind of do something different in the marketplace by looking at the existing successful businesses in the town and replicating that so in 20 years time he can be like those guys. So I think you'll find this a really interesting chat. I feel like our company has grown on relationships in general. It's I could I can go through the list of our clients and tell you all about them just because we take the time to to know about them. We we grab lunch, we grab coffee. And uh so relationships have always been big. And this year, you know, as we grow and as we're gonna to continue to grow into the future, I had an idea of just like, you know, I and it's it was inspired because I I look at the old guys in town. These are guys that are selling their companies that are, you know not doing anything anymore, but just having coffee with good old boys. And they're, you know, every single day they're doing this. And I'm like, man, like these guys own the entire city. And there's just little groups of them that just have coffee every single morning. I'm like, that's fantastic. They've, they've probably known each other their entire lives and they've done these crazy things together. And I'm like, that's gonna happen again you know, and let's, let's start now creating these groups. And uh, uh, we, we call it our breakfast club, but it's, it's, we're, we're capping at like eight guys and it's, you know, we've, I went one by one and I, I handpicked and tried to invite guys that I thought would get along that knew each other, that didn't know each other. Um, but are, but are the movers and shakers. These are the guys that I think will be doing big things in the city for years to come. And we've probably, we met, we meet every other week uh, for breakfast and um, we've, we've probably had 10 so far and it's, it's so much fun. I, I it was a couple of days, it was this Wednesday actually where I was, uh, where I was there and just, it's not about business. Like business stuff will come up. We'll talk about land or buildings or what's happening, but it's just, it's the relationship piece. It's the laugh against the fun and um it's gonna i know it's gonna benefit and it's just so enjoyable you know well you guys aside, are gonna be the guys in, yeah in 30 years who some young guy like you is gonna be like oh those guys that sit in cafes and drink coffee and have fun yep. and i think that's that to me is the spirit of entrepreneurship you know um we, we talked a lot just before christmas in the group about the idea of wealth creation and what that means and and while while money is a factor in that, it's about planning and creating the life you want, and that is what you can do when you run a business. Now, it's it's always very uh, inspiring to hear two guys sitting on a call like this or an interview going, "Hey, you know, he started three years ago, and now he's got a company that's doing half a million dollars a year, and he's got this great team, um, and you know, his plan is to do this and that in the future." But of course, it's not. It, it's 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 easy retrospectively, and I think to to talk about these things, and I think as entrepreneurs, we have this unusual balance between an absolute self belief that you can't fail, but at the same time, uh, nagging self doubt every day that you're not good enough, <laughs> and and that combination, it, it's is very unique, because you you just don't believe you can fail, and you will outwork anyone else to make sure you don't. Uh, you'll never ever give up. But talk to me about the actual journey of entrepreneurship for you in, in a video production company, because you know a lot of videographers, filmmakers start behind the tools. They 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 want to ha hold control of everything. They want to do everything themselves, and they get very um, caught up in perfecting an edit, for example, and they blow their mm. profit because they spend too much time on the edit. Tell me about your philosophy and, and your journey in the last three years of how you're managing 
to still produce very high quality work, but also control the process and 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 some of the that those 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 moments on your journey where it's been difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's even even this week there was a there was a time where. I was so stressed. I just got in my truck and I just drove around a little bit because I'm like, I'm going nuts in this. But like you said, there's, there's also the feeling of, I can't fail. You know, if, if anything happens, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this and we're just gonna bust ass and, and make it happen. But there's absolutely struggles along the entire way of, you know, especially when you get employees and you have, I take it personally. It's like, these are, these are the guys that, that I had move here that I am responsible for their salaries and their livelihood and things like that. So there's the pressure of that now. Um, but it's, there's, there's so much learning in what you do and you, you constantly learn and the process is huge. The, the big thing. And uh, one of the main reasons why, you know, I, I don't even know how I found your podcast one day and uh, I was just listening. I listened to tons of episodes before I actually joined the VBA. And, um, but even at that at very beginning, it was like, Dan, I want to systemize my company, you know, and, and we've done different things and, you know, we're still going to continue to do different things. But um, I, the, one of the biggest struggles for me is just getting overwhelmed because I still have my hands in, every part of the business. And one, it, it, it keeps me involved, which is a good thing. And I understand and because it, it is my baby, but at the same time, trying to grow and with the rapid growth that we've seen, I need, I need systems and processes in place to hire and go, this is the roadmap, follow it. And uh, that's, that's my next big hurdle. And, you know, there's always been hurdles, you know, when you're smaller, you're trying to get your building reputation, you're trying to get your name out there and you raise your prices and stuff like that. And um, it's just a, it's a grind, but you each, each level you're, you're achieving something and you're doing something new. And I feel like now we're at a level where people aren't really giving us crap about our price. They're not, you know, they're not comparing us to, you know, some of the other companies in town. It's like, we're unique in what we do and the experience that we give our clients. So it's, I, I don't want to be in a price battle. I won't want them to even call somebody else, you know, but now I just want to continue the growth. So I have to have the big vision, but I need to be able to set the roadmap on how to get there. Yeah. And that's, that's sometimes it's really difficult for, um, for me personally, but I think just, I don't know, people that have that big, the big ideas, the, oh, I want to do this and this and this, but sometimes it's hard to run the operational day to day when you, when your mind is there. Well, it's like um, a seesaw, isn't it? You, you've got operations on one side and vision on the other. And in the middle, you're, you're like the pendulum and you're, you're, you're bouncing back and forward all day long. And, you know, the, I, I think there's a, a, there's a degree of chaos that exists as an entrepreneur trying to wrangle all the moving parts in a business. And, and I think it's important to, to share with the audience that, you know, it has been an incredible journey to go from zero to half a million. But I mean, we speak weekly on calls and it's like, mm-hmm. you know, there's just one problem after another and you set something in motion and it doesn't work and you've got to correct and correct and correct. So, so talk to me about some of the, other realities of of running a business and how how has working with us in the VBA supported that journey yeah i mean some of the the big things in business and this is why this is why i see a lot of freelancers not succeeding or not moving to the next level is they they don't realize everything that goes into operating a company they go, hey, I have a camera and a gimbal and a mic and some lights and I'm skilled in what I do. But then they don't know about the legal. They don't know about the insurance. They don't know about the accounting. They don't. And there's there's just all this stuff that goes into operating a company. Then you get employees and then you have workman's comp and you have an, you know insurance on them. And 
um, next to you, you know, and you, money's just flying out the door and you're in every direction. You're going like, what the hell's going on? So uh, my brother who, who actually graduated with an accounting degree came on at the end of our first year and uh, has been a huge help. And just like, he's we're yin and yang it's like we both have the same vision we both have the same work ethic but we play off each other's strengths so well and uh, he's been a massive help in just the operational back end of a company that allows me to think big and be with the co you know the clients and you know build the relationships and things like that and i it definitely would have been in a way slower process if i didn't have that um but going moving moving on now with with the VBA, being on calls and seeing seeing your peers that are you know some are earlier on and you know they're not where you are and some are doing twice what you're doing, and each has like unique issues and things like that. But you can always you can either you can always give advice that kind of jogs your memory and goes, oh I didn't I didn't think of that. But then there's the you know guys that you're you're trying to get to or you know larger sizes that have a whole new you know bag of issues that they're trying to deal with and it's like wow okay like one that's good to think about two i need a prep for that but you know it comes to it's it's, it's just fun because sitting down with you dan on the one-on-ones has been i think it's just some of my favorite parts just getting you know your thought process because you've You've done this for a long time. You've worked with a lot of people. But then the other fun side is getting to know some of these other guys in the in the community. Being on them weekly, laughing, joking, you know, you, you understand more about what they're going through and who they it's, are. So it's, it's like a it's space, fun. it's like a lunatic asylum, like all these crazy <laughs> entrepreneurs who are trying to build businesses, working, working yep. their ass off to kind of make it work and dealing with all this shit, get yep. together. And like, you can let off a bit of steam, you know? Absolutely. And we, we joke around, we have fun and it's, you, the longer you're in it, the, the more you, you know, okay. You know, I know uh, this person's had this issues. So, you know, even like their goals excite you. Um, so it's, it's a huge asset and a huge research to be able to ask a community of people that are doing the very same thing that you're doing. And it was hard, even, even starting just going, starting a business, I'm trying to figure out a resource for video production for education. And none of the courses that I found were on video. None of the, you know, there's no like books out there really for video. And I think that's where I first stumbled across your podcast was I'm like, this guy is talking to video companies and this is exactly the information that I want to hear. You take that a step further and I'm like, for the, for the price, I was like, this is, this is a no brainer to me, you know? And, and sometimes I, I get really busy and I can't be in all the meetings, but at the end of the year, when you, when you look back on what you spent and the things that you learned and what that, you know, equated to it's, yeah, I think it's been great. Well, it was interesting and thank you. Um, you know, Andrew just, just hit seven figures. And he just he he just casually mentioned it on a weekly win. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, we hit some figures. And on the call last week, I, I probed him about it, and he said, "Well, it, when I joined, you know, I our goal was to hit one point five in five years, and we hit a million in two, and and stuff like that just fills me with such joy, because what I think the VBA has become is is a community and an insurance policy, where." We're very selective about who we let in. So there's a really high caliber. And you and I have spoken about this privately. And then like and when someone isn't quite a right fit, we we sort of encourage them to either step up or step step to another program which is more appropriate for them. But we've created this 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 this, this VBA has evolved. It's a mastermind, but it's also a, a strong community. And and really it it's I think it's become like an insurance policy where We've had in the last year, three people who left previously have come back because mm. it was cold outside. Right. And, and I yep. think that's, that's, what's cool. And, and it's great to hear your feedback, but also I love when we get together one-to-one -one because we, we can really noodle down on, you know, some of the quarterly challenges and I'll, and I'll push you on your numbers. And, and I think there's been instances where you've thought you've been going great in one direction and I'll, 
I think my responsibility as a coach is to, yes, yeah, sure, have fun with you guys, but be the guy to go, hold on, let's let's go into this area here that you're kind of brushing over because I can see something. And I think that I, I feel like the most important role as a coach is to call out things and yeah. ask you to justify decisions because as the CEO, nobody asks you to justify your decisions. Your team don't. Um, t- talk to me about that. Is how important is that, and is it important that you know that I call you out on things and ask you to to go into details that perhaps are uncomfortable? Yeah, that's it's an interesting point because we've we've looked at you know numbers, you know last year every quarter, like you said, and um, sometimes you go, well, this doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense, and um, and you 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 push me to to either change it or like figure something new out and um there's been plenty of times where you call me out on stuff and then like after the meeting i'm sitting there like i'm gonna show him yeah and, and it's 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 it. fun because there's i mean because early on there is there's certain motivators that that get you to go okay you know i'm gonna show them it's been years now and they see it and you know no one's batting an eye at what we're doing there and it's like well, sometimes you forget other than your motivation, different factors that can push you. And as a business owner, you know, you, you typically there's a lot of, you, you have a lot of pride in what you do and you, you know, there's a lot of, you think you're right and you're dogmatic about certain things. And for someone to, to say otherwise, not that they're not good points and that you're learning from them, but there's, there is an element sometimes where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make this work and I'm going to show Dan that he was wrong. Yeah, and I, and sometimes I like that. those are exciting, you know. Yeah, but I, I but absolutely, you have to have someone that that goes. This is a gut check. Let's let's look at what you're doing and make sure that you're. Well, also, you know, I think own. where where we sometimes you know um, come up against a little bit of you know I wouldn't say friction, but where where there's a no, bit of push not. pull is yep. that your desire to grow rapidly is like you want to go a hundred miles an hour and be everywhere now. And I guess where I do is I come back with a slightly different perspective and I go, I've been there and done that 15 mm-hmm. years ago. And there's a number of other business owners who are a bit older in the group who've been there and done that, who like, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to carefully guide where that energy goes. And, and what I love about that is that it's a very healthy opposition because you're pulling one direction and I'm, you, I'm, you're pushing one direction, I'm pulling in another. And I think what happens is, is that it just keeps the guide rails in, in, in a safe zone so that we are ensuring that you are, you're not going to waste energy going right. down the wrong track. And I think that that, I, I love that as well, because it isn't all about, Hey, let's have fun. We're great friends. This is awesome. There is, there is some, um, I'll use the word tension, but tension in a really healthy way. It's like, it motivates you to go, well, I'm going to show him, but also you sit and you sleep on it and you go, huh, there's actually some value in that. So maybe I'll take a bit of that and a bit of this because our egos can easily go, well, you know, Den's in his fifties. He lives by the beach. He's slowed down, which is true. Um, but I think what's cool is that I also get excited by what you're doing because it keeps me on my toes. I'm like, what am I, what am I, what am I missing here? Where are my blind spots? Cause, cause I'm learning as much from you because of the way you're approaching your business. And I think it's a really healthy partnership. And I think that mm-hmm. the great business should be a healthy partnership. There is an, a mutually valuable exchange of, of value. Um, and you know, we don't tie anyone in. It's like, it's month to month. And so, and we've got like members that have been with us three years and I, and that's my way of changing the industry because typically in these mastermind groups, it's like, you got to pay all this money up front and you're, you're locked in for a year. Yeah. And so I think it's exciting that we're able to, to do business differently. And that to me is why I'm an entrepreneur because we get to set the rules. So Josh, um, as we, as we wrap things up here, Tell me what's one thing that you could share with a video production company listening or watching this, who is, you know, not quite at the half million a year or, or wants to grow. 
what what what's one thing you would share with them about how to how to get there yeah i would say um it's it's really hard sometimes to slow down to speed up and you know den's right i'm i'm very go 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 i need to i need to push because i'm just not a patient person in general but when i have taken the time and step back and slow down to build again the foundation that is going to be strong enough and, and for me to build on we've gone much faster in those areas and there's just there's a lot that we can just constantly learn but i you know i'd, I'd also say like i wouldn't be able to do what i do as fast as what we've done without having the right people on the team and making sure obviously culture fit is good. So everyone's getting along and has a good work ethic, but play off your strengths. Um, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to say, I'm not good at this, but you need to, you need to kind of self-realize, Hey, there's people that are smarter than me. Uh, there's people that are better than me here. And, you know, if they, if, if we can get them on board and on the same vision and, and where we want the company to go and uh, we're going to be much better for it. And we, we just care about it. We care about our clients, but we care about our people. I'm not, at no means do any of my guys think, oh, Josh is just sitting on his golden throne and I'm here picking up the scraps. It's like we're growing as a team and we're in a building phase and you know, I want everyone to succeed around me. So just don't be, don't be selfish, work hard and uh, take the time to do it right. So I hope you found that useful guys. Uh, I'm going to be doing an interview every month on this channel and also doing some solo episodes, but I'd love to hear from you. What kind of things are you interested in learning about on this channel? Um, please drop some comments below and please do me a favor and subscribe and put the bell on for the notifications and let me know uh, what you think. I'd love to start a conversation with you. See you next week, guys.